Uh, okay, everybody. So uh, what we're going to be looking at today is just um, a quick lecture on some things that you may have not understood from programming assignment two. So just so you remember, uh, programming assignment two is due uh, Wednesday, right? So tomorrow. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So looking at uh, programming homework two, which I've got loaded right here, um, I think we talked about insertion sort, well, yeah, we did in, in regular lecture, um, binary search, we talked about bubble sort, we talked about um, problem two is just testing your code to make sure that your sorting and searching algorithms work. Um, you know, you just have to tell me what the results are and make sure you understand it. So, um, you know, if your stuff's working. Uh, number three is timing. We talked about that. Uh, what we didn't talk about was the end of this assignment, um, problems five and um, problem six. Uh, but there is something I want to talk about before we talk about problems five and six. So what I wanted to talk about was, um, I don't have it here. Oh, no. Oh, how am I going to do that? Um, let's see here. Uh, well, you know what? I don't care. I will just do it this way. So um, I've got MATLAB uploaded, not uploaded, loaded uh, right here. And what I want to do is just open up a new script so I can show you something. So uh, in the binary search algorithm, was it binary search? No. Uh, bubble sort. In the bubble sort algorithm, there's uh, some line in the pseudocode that says like for or like if it's something like this if aj less than um or greater than a j plus one it's not written correctly here i'm trying to write it wrong on purpose um and then it says then interchange uh, aj and a j plus one so it says something like that and um it's this interchanging part that people are having trouble with so this is like on i think bubble sort okay and the thing is is that's that's not um clear to everybody uh how you're supposed to actually interchange two variables and so the thing is is what you can't do is something like this. Like, let's say I have, um, you know, let's say I'm going to make a vector here. I'm going to call it A equals um, 13, 7, 25, right? So there's a vector 13, 7, 25, okay? Now, what if I want to switch the 7 and the 20, right? then what you would be doing is you would want to be interchanging uh, position two and position three. Well, how would you do that? Here's what you can't do. You can't just go A2 equals A3, A3 equals A2. Because you can, you can see what happens to the vector, right? If you try to switch the seven and the 20 just by saying, a2 equals a3, a3 equals a2, then you end up with two 20s and seven disappears, right? Because this first line here, when you say a2 equals a3, then the a3, which is 20, overwrites the seven, and you get this, and the seven is gone forever, right? At this point, you've lost the seven, and it will never return because you know, it's not saved anywhere as a variable. And so whenever you want to actually swap two entries in a list, you have to use a temporary variable. So if I go back up here to this A, right? Um, A equals 13, 17, 25. I'll put it in this script here. Um, if that's what you have, then the way you want to interchange two variables is something like this. You want to go, you make a temporary variable, which you can call anything. So like, you know, maybe temp1 is a2. 
So what that will do is I'll save off the seven. So if I save off the seven into this temporary variable, then it would be okay to say that a two is equal to a three like that. Because at that point, actually, let me take the semicolons off. Um, at that point, if I run this code, let me see, I'll see here. Um, if I run this code here, then what you get is a is 17, or sorry, 13, 7, 25, temp one is seven, right? So we've saved the seven into the temporary variable. So then when you um, do a2 equals a3, you overwrite the seven with the 20 and you've got 13, 20, 25. That's what happened last time. But the difference is the seven's not gone forever because the seven is stored in the temporary variable. So after you do this, then as your last step, you can say a three is equal to 10, right? So let me just, do all of this now. Oops, it's back. Okay, CLC. So if I run this code here, hey, temp one. CLC. All right. Um, if you run this code here, right, the original A is 13725. And then if you look at A when the code is done running, A then now it's 27 instead of 720, right? And so the point is, is that it takes three lines to interchange AJ and AJ plus one. So if you were trying to change AJ and AJ plus one, you would just have AJ, and then this would have to be, you have to be you know, careful, think which one's which here. Um, you saved AJ, so that means AJ is safe to overwrite. So the code would look something like this um, inside of an if statement, right? So, uh, oops, it was loud, sorry. Just double checking the bubbles were here. Um, yeah, that was right. If AJ greater than AJ plus one, then interchange AJ and AJ plus one. So um, when you get to this part of the pseudocode, it would just look like this. If, sorry, uh, uppercase here. If AJ greater than AJ plus one, then you would have a block of code like this. And then you would end your if statement. So, um, yeah, so that's just a comment about um, how you're supposed to do the interchanging for the bubble sort if you were having trouble with that. Um, you know, that's one of the weaknesses of pseudocode is that if they, um, they're supposed to be describing everything you're supposed to do as you know well as they can. And they didn't there, right? They didn't say how to interchange two items. But, um, so you have to figure it out. And then by the way, um, this code is actually in a couple of for loops. So you end the if statement, but then if you're continuing on with your bubble sort, your code probably looks like that, where you're ending a for loop and then ending another for loop. But that's not what we're talking about, just talking about this one single if state. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that that is how to do that in bubble sort. All right, now let's look at something else. The, the Fibonacci numbers here. Okay, now on problem four, um, you are generating Fibonacci numbers, and we did cover that last time, right? So um, if you're generating Fibonacci numbers, um, there's code here that will help you. Let me just copy this. Don't copy from the PDF like I did. 
you know, probably cause me problems. Um, and then, you know, this is, this is really easy. We even talked exactly about how to do this last time, like several different ways. So I'm just gonna do one of those ways. Oops, sure. P4. Um, so we talked about this last time, so I don't feel too bad about like going over it now and, and just, you know, giving away the answer here. Um, so remember how this code works. The idea is uh, when you're going from three to 20, then um, you've got two things in the F vector before you start and then F end. Oh, oops, sorry, this is, this is wrong. This is wrong. It's a for loop, not a while loop. All right, we'll save it again. Um, so you have to set F1 and F2 before you get going because those are defined according to the Fibonacci sequence this way. F1 is one and F2 is one. So you set those. And then in a loop, you calculate elements three to, through 20. Um, so F3 will be F2 plus F1. So it'll be able to work through that. Um, and that's fine. Um, the only thing you have to be careful here um, with a script like this is this is a script, not a function. And so the F is actually the F variable in your workspace. Uh, so if I run this, then fine, it ran. And if I look at the F vector, um, we've got 20 Fibonacci numbers. But um, actually, no, it won't have problems if you run it again. I was thinking it would, but it won't. Uh, ignore me. Okay. So yeah, so something like that works for calculating Fibonacci numbers in problem four. Um, and we talked about how to do it in a while loop as well, um, which was almost the same thing, except you have to, um, you kind of can't use a loop counter or you can, you, you can use a loop counter, but not the easiest way to do it. Um, but uh, let me say something about that. Yeah, all right. So how would you do a Fibonacci sequence for problem five, where you calculate Fibonacci numbers, but if you look at problem five, we're not calculating a, a certain number of them. The In problem four, it says, calculate 20 Fibonacci numbers. And so you just put a 20 here in your code and that's how you calculate 20 Fibonacci numbers. Uh, in problem five, you're not doing that because it says consider the Fibonacci numbers whose values do not exceed 4 million and then do something. Well, how do you find the Fibonacci numbers whose values does not exceed 4 million? And by the way, that does not mean put 4 million here right? It's the value of the Fibonacci number is 4 million, not the 4 millionth Fibonacci number. Fibonacci numbers get big really, really fast. That won't work, right? Like the 20th Fibonacci number is already 6,000. Um, so how do you stop making Fibonacci numbers when they get to a certain size? And there's different ways you can do it. So um, here's one way you can do it. I'll, I'll go back to the while loop or for loop real quick and then I'll change it. So for i equals 3 to 20, what did we have? f i equals f i minus 1 plus f i minus 2. End, end, end. Okay. Does that work? Let's try it. What did I do wrong? Oh, capital F. Capital F. Capital F. Capital F. All right, save run. Okay, so we've got Fibonacci numbers, right? And if you look at these, might be a mess to look at, but if you look at these, uh, what you'll see is that the Fibonacci numbers, um, they get big pretty fast. We got up to 6,000. So what if I only wanted Fibonacci numbers up to 1,000, right? What you could do is you could 
jump out of this loop. And so the way you would jump out of the loop is you could just say, well, what if you could put an if in here, if f in is greater than a thousand, um, break. Now breaks are not often used in, in programming languages. They're considered bad form because when you see a break statement, it kind of, you're just leaving the, you're just leaving in the middle of the loop. And, uh, you know, it's hard to make sure that you're in a consistent state if that happens, but you can use them. So like if I do this code now, you'll see something different happen. Let me see, I'll see here. So remember how this worked? We calculated 20 and, you know, at least the last four are bigger than a thousand here. And I put a thousand here. All right, so let's CLC and see what happens. CLC, run. Okay, so it ran. Let's see what happened here. Oops, wrong place. Oh, <laughs> what, what happened here was that uh, it stopped this loop early, but nothing looks different because I didn't clear my variables. Um, that's what I was saying earlier about, you know, maybe um, about the F variable being in the, the workspace here. This isn't a function, right? I wrote this as a script, not a function, which means all my variables are just my normal variables. They're not local variables to a function. And that means that um, if I already created F with 20 things in it, then I'm going to be stuck with an F with 20 things in it unless I delete them. Okay. So I'm going to start this by clearing out the F variable. So then we can actually see what this code does and not the leftover results from earlier. So CLC, uh, let's run it. Run again, looks the same. Let's look at F and you'll see this time it doesn't go up to 20. This said 20, but it actually did 17 and it stopped right here. So why did it stop at 1597? It stopped at 1597 because it calculated the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th uh, Fibonacci numbers. It calculated the 17th Fibonacci number right here, right? Like F17 right here. And when it calculated F17, it got 1597. And then after that, it checked if the end of F, that's what F end is, the end of F was bigger than a thousand. Well, it is, it's 1597. So then it breaks, which means it breaks out of not the if statement, it breaks out of the for loop. So it just terminated this for loop early and um, left it right there. Now, hopefully you can see a problem with this. If I wanted to ch do problem five here, where it says, um, considering the terms in the Fibonacci sequence whose terms do not exceed 4 million, it would be easy just to come here and put a 4 million, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So this code right here will calculate Fibonacci numbers up to 4 million. And if I look at F, Oh, well, it won't if uh, I don't let it go far enough. That's a, the weakness to this approach is um, you were still in a for loop. So if you said 20, it could only go up to 20. It can stop early, but it couldn't go longer. Um, so I put 50 here. Now I ran it. Let's look at F again. And there we go. So this is what I wanted to see. So if you look at the Fibonacci numbers now, start at one and we count them up and it got to here, 5 million, right? 5,702,887. That's, that's when it's bigger than 4 million, right? This is smaller than 4 million and then the next one is bigger than 4 million. So 3 million, 5 million. Um, great, but that's not what the problem says. 
right? The problem says we want to consider the Fibonacci sequence whose values do not exceed 4 million. Well, we've got this one, 5 million on the end, that does exceed 4 million. So um, the easiest way to deal with this, honestly, is just to calculate it. And then after you calculate it, just get rid of it. So what you can do is this. Inside this if statement here, if f end is bigger than 4 million, then yeah, we want to break out of the for loop, but also let's just remove let's just remove the one that was bigger than 4 million. So if f end is bigger than 4 million, it's not supposed to be there. So you can er erase it. So the way you would erase it is just say f end equals and basically you want it to be empty. So you put like that. And that will um what are those square brackets? The square brackets with nothing in them will uh, replace the end with nothing, which means it removes the end. So something like this, uh, run the code again. Let's look at F and you see now it does not exceed 4 million because we remove the offending element at the end. Now this code isn't great because I had to put a number here where this 50 was where it had to be big enough that we could actually get to the 3 million entry. So it had to be bigger than it looks like 33 in order for that to happen. Okay. And so that's bad. You know, you don't want to have to think about what that number should be. And so it would have been better to do this instead of in a for loop, it would have been better to do it in a while loop. And so if you wanted a while loop, what you would do is just kind of rearrange this stuff. And instead of doing four, and then having the test inside the loop, you could actually do the test here. You could say, while f end is less than or equal to 4 million, then you calculate Fibonacci numbers. But We can get rid of this. So this will calculate Fibonacci numbers. Problem is what's I, right? Um, so you would need to replace I with something else. And so it's kind of kind of dumb, but if you if you think of F as being like this, like F1, F2, F3, dot, 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 right? Dot, dot, dot. And then when you get up to the end, you actually have f end at the end. Like that's what the f vector looks like, something like that. f1, f2, f3, up to f end. Maybe I'll write it like this. It's also uppercase, but I'm not going back and changing that. Right, this is what the f vector looks like f1, f2, up to f end. Well, if you were trying to calculate a new Fibonacci number, where does the new, oops, where does the new Fibonacci number go? Well, if you calculate a new Fibonacci number, the next Fibonacci number after the end would go right here. Well, what do you think that's called? The right after the end is f end plus one. So if you're trying to calculate a Fibonacci number, what you could do is couple of ways. You could either say f end plus one. That's one past the end. So that's a new element. And then you would want to add up the previous two Fibonacci numbers, which are f end and f end minus one. That'll work. Um, so again, if you're thinking about Fibonacci numbers um, or elements in a sequence, this is one past the end. This is one L or this is the end. And then this is one element before the end. So these are the two at the end of the sequence, add them up and we put it in the next spot. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is just to say this, you could just say, uh, F end plus one, you still need that, uh, equals, and then um, how are you going to, oh, no, actually you can do it this way. F equals 
Well, what's the new f vector? The new f vector is the old f vector. And then we want to put this element. Oops. On there. And that's a way to add something to a vector. So I'll just show you down here. So CLC. Uh, like if I say x equals um, 4, 8, 2, right? And if I want to add an element after the 2, I could do it this way. x equals x and then whatever you want to add. So if I want to add 999, you just do this. And that sticks in 999 on the end. So that's how you could add the next Fibonacci number to the end of the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, so let's run this code. What happened? Line eight, line eight. Parentheses. I'm missing parentheses. Okay. Right. Okay. So again, this code does the same thing that the other code did. Uh, has the same problem, right? The problem is, is that you test to see if you're bigger than 4 million after you already calculated it. So you actually end up with one number on the end of the list that's bigger than 4 million. So what you do is solve it the same way by removing it. Run. Okay. Um, so now when you run this, it stops at 4 million. So that's a couple of different ways to calculate Fibonacci numbers up to a certain number. Um, in this case, 4 million. But there's one more part to this assignment. Okay. So uh, what I want to do is not do the entire problem all at once for you. So I'm going to just erase this code now. And um, I'm going to make a vector here. I'm just going to type it in and say, uh, all right, here's a list. Okay. So I'm calling it capital X. Why capital? I don't know. Um, run. Okay, so that's it. It's just a list of numbers, right? But what you can see here is that some of these numbers are even and some of them are odd, right? Like uh, odd, then two, three evens in a row, four odds in a row, actually five odds in a row, um, and then three evens, right? Some are even and some are odd. And the reason we care about that is because if you look at the programming assignment, the programming assignment says, by considering terms in the Fibonacci sequence whose values do not exceed 4 million, right? Find the sum of the even valued terms. How are you gonna find the sum of the even valued terms? Well, you need to find the even numbers. How are you gonna find the even numbers here? And then you have to add them up. So we need to, find the even numbers and add them up. Okay, now there are shortcuts in MATLAB to do this, but um, the way we're gonna do it is just with a for loop. And so obviously this is not Fibonacci numbers, um, but that doesn't matter. The, the same idea works. So what you can do is you can loop through your um, vector. So you could say for i equals one to the length of x. And then for right now, let's just print it on the screen. All right? So this is just going to show the, the numbers on the screen. Right there they are. Um, what we want to do is test them to see if they're even. And there's a way to do that. 
So there's a thing called modular arithmetic. So um, if I do help mod, I think it'll help. Um, okay, well, it says how to do it. Mod XY returns the floor of X over Y. Okay, and that might not seem like it's useful, but it is because it makes it easy to check even and odd. Um, let me show you how. If I type this, mod uh, 13 comma two. Now 13 is odd, right? 13 is odd. And if I do mod 13 comma two, it says one. And if I do seven, seven's odd, right? And if I do mod seven over two, I get one. Okay. If I do mod three over two, I get one. All the odd numbers, when you do mod 13 over 2, you get 1. Um, now, for the even numbers, if I do like mod 6, comma 2, I get 0. If I do mod, you know, uh, 18 over 2, I get 0. The point is, is this kind of line here, if that 6 was even, you're going to get a 0. And if the 6 was odd, we're going to get a one. And the reason for that is because if you think about it, um, the code for mod that it said was it was going to do this. Like if I'm, I'll do seven as a test. It's going to do seven over two, right? Okay. So seven over two is then three and a half. Okay. Actually, I don't remember what it said for, how did it say it did? Um, the floor of X minus. Okay. What did we run? Yeah. So what did it say? It actually doesn't matter how it works. So I don't know why I'm, I don't know why I'm looking, but, um, oh, X minus floor over X over Y times Y. Okay. Um, Uh, where is it? Okay. So like if you wanted to test seven, it would be like seven minus floor seven over two, but then times two, right? That's what it does. Um, now the way that works is you've got um, the floor here. When you do floor seven over two, you get three, right? But when you do floor six over two, you also get three. And so what's happening here is that seven over two is three and a half, and then it gets rounded. But six over two is three, and that's exact. Um, and so what's happening is every odd number that you put where that seven is, when you divide it by two, has that 0 0.5. And then when you do a floor, it rounds down. Um, and so you're losing that 0 0.5. And then when you multiply it by two, then what happens is uh, when you multiply it by two, what happens is that uh, you're scaling it back to the same size as the original, and then uh, you know you end up with a zero or a one. Um, I, I know that I didn't explain that very well, but like I said, you don't need to know it. What you need to know is this: when you do mod with an odd number and two, you get one, and when you do mod with an even number and two you get zero. So that's our test for even. So if I wanted to test these numbers in this, uh, if I wanted to test the numbers in a vector to see if they're even or odd, all you have to do is check mod the number and then two. If it's zero, they're even. So like, for example, I can do this. If mod xi comma two, right? It's always comma two for even odd. If it's zero, I'll just display um, xi. So I'll just print the number on the screen. That's all I'm gonna do, um, int. 
So this is how you can do something just for the even numbers, right? If I save this and I run it, then, oh, <laughs> it looks weird. Then I call it, run it. So when you run it, it just goes 6, 8, 2, 12, 16, 4, right? Because it found the 3, the 6, sorry, found the 6 and the 8 and the 2, skips the 5, 7, 9, 99, 11, and then it found the 12, 16, 4. 12, 16, 4. Okay. If you wanted to find the odd numbers, all you'd have to do is come up here, put a 1. Now it finds odd numbers. Put a 0, it finds the even numbers. And then um, put a one, it finds the odd numbers. Great. How do you add them up, right? Because if you look at the programming homework, the programming homework says find the sum of the even valued terms. Well, that's easy. Um, what you would want to do is you have to keep a running total. So before you start your for loop, you, put, you make a variable to hold the sum, call it whatever you want, and just put a zero in it. And then what you want to do is instead of displaying this number here, what you want to do with it is say like sum is going to equal the sum plus xi. So what's going to happen is the first time through the sum is zero. So you're going to have zero right here plus the first even number. And then now sum is going to have a value. And then the second time through, right? You're going to have an eight. Um, sum is going to be six because it found the six. And then you're going to add on the eight to the previous sum. So what this does is keeps a running total. So it's going to go six and then six plus eight is going to be 14. And then six plus eight plus two is going to be whatever it is, 16, um, 28, uh, whatever it is, 44, 48, something like that. Um, but this is how you do a running total have a variable for the sum and then a line like this to do a running total that does not get overwritten. Let's try it. Run. You don't see anything because I put a semicolon, but what's the sum? 48. So if you add up the even numbers, they'll add up to 48. And this code does it. So how do you use that for your Fibonacci numbers? Well, right, if this was Fibonacci numbers, which one, one, two, five, eight, 13. You don't type them in, but you know, I am. Um, all right. So if you had Fibonacci numbers, the only thing that's different is you need to come down here and change all of these X's into F's. Right now it adds up Fibonacci numbers. 44. Uh, so the idea is for problem uh, five is you do a block of code. You could do it at once, but I would recommend that you don't. So your code should look like this, like F1 equals one, F2 equals one, right? Calculate the Bonacci numbers. up to 4 million, um, right? That's where you put your code, the code here. And then you add them up like this. So this is the code that will add up Fibonacci numbers. You just need to make sure that you calculate them up to 4 million. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong answer when you add up the even numbers. Um, and that's how you would do problem 5. It says 4, but this is problem 5. Okay? So, um, yeah, so that's how you would do it. You would just calculate Fibonacci numbers, add up the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, yeah, and just a reminder about what to include in the assignment. 
So what you want to include is your code goes here, right? Um, and then you also need the result, right? It says result because it says find the sum of the even value term. So you need to know what that is so you can report it down here somewhere. Uh, put your code and then you just say result was some big number. Okay. Um, and we did talk about this a lot last time, so I'm not gonna talk about that right now. All right, so um, yeah, I think that's it for now. So hopefully that helped you with uh, the homework if you were having trouble. If not, come to office hours later today or tomorrow and I will help you, okay? All right, uh, talk to you later.